This conference will now be recorded. Well, hello there. This is the Empress of Biz, Joanne Forrester, doing her most favorite thing in the world, talking to small business entrepreneurs, those who make things happen in America. And as usual, I am with my favorite co-host, Sal Acosta, who uh, knows all these fascinating people. And uh, so we have we get together periodically and get to talk to uh, guys like Zach and David who are making things happen off Shark, shark Wheels. And I've got to ask before we even start, where'd that name come from? I'll go ahead and answer that one from you. Uh, the shape of the shark wheel, which I've got here in my hand, it is a very odd shape. Um, it is a perfect circle. It is a perfect cube. It is a perfect hexagon. It is a perfect sine wave. It's just a million shapes in one. But when people looked at it, it is absolutely positively the exact shape of a set of shark jaws. So if you were to have a set of shark jaws in your hand, they would look exactly like this. And that's where the name came from. Personally, <laughs> I didn't like the name shark wheel because people had to ask, why is it called a shark wheel? And mm -hmm. it really lends itself more to being sort of a snake-like shape or something like that. So I was thinking more along the lines of, sidewinder or something like that. Uh, it turned out being the best thing that ever happened to us because the name Shark Wheel, it just lends itself to people remembering it somehow. Maybe it's because of Shark Week or Shark Tank or things like that. As you know, we were on Shark Tank and that was just a pure coincidence that our name was Shark Wheel and we were on Shark Tank. And when it comes to searching for us, the fact that we have that name, it makes us show up really easily so right right it comes right up on top of google yeah now, now david before we, we go too far down the road can you tell us and, and everybody that's watching um what exactly is a shark wheel what what is your product what does it do and and why is it a better reinvention of the wheel that was done literally thousands of years ago all right so that's a great question um what's the most famous saying in the world you can't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> only a moron would try and do that. And when it came to our product, at first we didn't know what the advantages of it were. We had this shape and the shape was a cube and we knew that it rolled. And that was just weird. It was weird that something that would fit inside of a cube and be flat on six sides would actually start rolling and not only roll, roll really well. And so as we started testing things and trying different things, this is our skateboard wheel. So it's like three of these segments put together, mm -hmm. it makes a wheel. This wheel right here is significantly faster than a normal wheel. There's less friction touching the ground. And so with less friction, you have less rolling resistance. So you have a faster, wheel even though it's a cube it is perfectly round so when it's rolling it is the smoothest thing you've ever felt um, an analogy that most people can get if you hit a speed bump with your car and you hit it dead straight you will feel the bump oh but yeah if you take it at an angle it minimizes how much of that you feel our wheel strikes everything at an angle it's like it approaches it at an angle instead of a steamroller. That means we go over pebbles and rocks and sand and all the things that a regular wheel would stop on, we go right through it. And that's a huge, huge advantage in skateboarding, okay? The, so let me ask you this, um, sure. because to be honest with you, and, and this was my case, and, and, and I suspect you've run into this a lot, um, I was skeptical of, of this technology, this product actually having an, an increased performance. Um, now, I know you have really good reviews on Amazon because I know you're selling on Amazon. 
Um, I'm assuming the guys from Shark Tank, and we can talk about that, did, did their due diligence and, and had some sure smart people test it. I also know you did some testing with a university in California. So anyway, could you just kind of talk about all those three and, and, and maybe how you overcome people that are, are skeptical? Well, that's the number one thing is you have to educate the consumer on why you're better. Um, the testimonials that we get from the skateboard wheel, we'll get phone calls from people saying, hey, do you know you could use that on this? Or do you know you could use that on that? And everybody's got an idea of where it can have an advantage. Um, it had to be a lot of work. That's the biggest thing that people don't understand. It, it took us six years total to get to where we are right now. Part of that is testing on ourselves, and the other part of it is giving it to the general public and letting them test it. You cannot beat testimonials. When people write it and they go on Amazon and they write it in a glowing review, that's how you educate. They are more willing to listen to somebody else, a consumer, than they are going to listen to me. Of course, I'm going to say it's great, but I'm the guy selling it. Um, so getting the general public to know who we are and why we are was the biggest challenge. Going on Shark Tank was huge for that. Um, it gave us exposure to 10 million people the first time it aired. It's probably aired 20 times since then. Um, we, I don't know if it's still the case, but we were the highest watched episode ever when we were done. Um, from that episode, people called us from all over the world. And people showed up at our front door and said, hey, did you know you just solved the biggest problem in X? And they would explain to us what the problem we solved was and how our wheel technology does it. One of them right here, this is like a gigantic skateboard wheel. This is what's used in warehouse equipment. Our wheel in scientific testing lasted 600% longer than a regular wheel because we get wow. rid of the heat better. Uh, we had no idea that was one of our advantages. It was something that just came out over time. About 50% of the people that we run into have heard of us now. We've been on Discovery Channel. We've been on Fox. We've won FedEx's Big Small Business Award. I just won Innovator of the Year last year. Um, tons of wonderful things that have happened to us because we have a really unique product. People love hearing that you reinvented the wheel. But what they love even more is that you did it with a square wheel. I mean, it's just ludicrous. But that's what makes it so awesome is people like you will be, this cannot possibly work. This is a gimmick. And gimmick was the big word we had to overcome. But then once they test it and they realize it's significantly better than a regular wheel, they become your biggest advocates. They yell at the top of the mountains, hey, guess what I found out? Guess what I discovered? And they love sharing it with their friends. So we have this super polarizing product, but it absolutely fills the bill when it comes to performance. That is and what so we do. What you said was what the first time you saw a shark wheel, you were skeptical of its performance. And there's many different ways, as David mentioned, that you can prove that it's a better performing wheel. One of them is through testimonials. And, you know, that does get a lot of weight, seeing that people actually like the product. We have hundreds and hundreds of five star reviews across Amazon. But the most telling detail is, is as you briefly mentioned, we, we had uh, years of scientific testing done. Uh, from labs in Canada, labs in the U.S., but most significantly at the universe, uh, San Diego State University at the mechanical engineering department. They did full two years of testing and found significant advantages in friction, off-road ability, load capacity, speed, and the list goes on and on. Um, Long longevity. Longevity as well. So when you, uh, when you apply more and more weight to our wheel, you see more and more frictional advantages. Uh, but really what the shark wheel is, is it's really it's really a off-roading wheel or a rough terrain wheel. The worse the terrain, the better we perform. And again, all of that's been proven in scientific testing. I, I've got to take a leap on this. Just, okay, I happen to be a space fan. Would that be you something on like the Mars rover or something? <laughs> Funny, you should mention Funny you should mention that. So why don't you touch on that? Yeah, so... Um, so one, one of the uh, the things we do with our business is apply for grants. Um, David mentioned we won a FedEx small business grant. 
Uh, that was the first one we won. Subsequently, we won government grants. Um, and those were through the National Science Foundation to build a farming wheel that's actually behind us. It's a four foot tall, 400 pound farming wheel. That's the desktop version of it. This is a but, 3D printed one. Yeah, but the actual the big wheel one is, is right behind, behind us. us. Um, and so we won a total of a million dollars in grants uh, over two years to, to develop this farming wheel. It saves farmers $26,000 per farming season. Um, and For their wheels are not cutting, not breaking down in that, that longevity, right? Um, not just that. In the farming industry, it's their wheels dig a trench, and our wheels do not. And the trench, when you're watering crops, right. uh, that trench has to be filled in at when it's time to harvest. And filling in a trench that could be five feet deep and a mile and a half around, and one of many rings of trenches, that is the bane of their life. And having a wheel that doesn't dig a trench is just a game changer in that industry. Cool. Yeah. So, David, let me ask NASA, you a question. For the NASA grant to, to put our wheels on a Mars rover. That's why we said, funny, you should ask that question. So, we, we specifically applied for that grant. They had a request for a proposal that was looking for a better wheel. Because if you look at the Mars rover, there's only been one point of failure, and that's the wheel. Uh, so, the wheel is... Um, is uh, getting a lot of damage over time and it's becoming the failure point of the entire vehicle. So they put out a request for a proposal for a better wheel. Um, unfortunately, we did not win that grant. I think it's the only grant we didn't win, um, but for some unknown reason, we did not win that grant yet. We are allowed to reapply again. Um, but yeah, we plan to go on many different applications. Cool. So let me ask you a question. Um, Maybe even taking a step back. I mean, so it's it's based kind of on a, on a shark jaws. But but how did you even come up with this? Meaning, you know, were you fishing and and you caught a shark? Were you? How much time reading? do you have for the how podcast? You, how, how much time do we got? <laughs> so I was running with the bulls in Pamplona, and I didn't stick the landing. No, I'm kidding. Um, all of this came from out of left field. Um, when you say, how did you come up with a shark wheel? I nobody. Like I said, nobody's dumb enough to try and reinvent the wheel. This is something that came from other things. I'm going to have to get up and grab something real quick. In, in one sentence, David made a massive scientific discovery, and that's where the wheel was born from. But it gets much more interesting than that. This is our turbine. Okay. This is a new kind of propeller. This is something that we also have a patent on. Okay. And it's lovely. It's very, very pretty. This is four shark wheels put together. So the original idea was for a turbine, a propeller. And based on working with the shape over and over and over again, one day it rolled. And it never should have rolled. We thought, you know, it's a cube. It's not going to roll. And when it did roll, it was a, a light bulb moment where it was like, Oh my gosh, this thing rolls and it stands up really straight. And we were thinking, okay, it's not going to speed wobble. And our first thought was trying to get rid of speed wobble in high speed things. And, and the other thing, like a grocery cart. Everybody knows the grocery cart wheel that wobbles. Well, we would fix that problem. So originally we thought we just had a wheel that didn't wobble. And then as we started doing testing and finding out that we dissipate heat and we wear even and all this other kind of stuff, it just kept happening and happening and happening. It's been the goose that lays the golden eggs. It has become so many different variations of itself and it's all based on the exact same shape. This shape is the winner shape. Like once we had this, this was naturally correct. Okay, this is a shape that nature creates all day long. It's how a fish swims. It's how you walk. You do not walk one foot in front of the other. You walk left, then right, then left, then right. Same thing with a snake moving through the grass. Same thing with everything that moves. Nature made the shape. I happen to have discovered it. And then once I discovered it, applying it was very, very easy because it was naturally better. It just was something that fit the bill. So it, this is our Frisbee, okay? 
uh -huh. we turned it into a new kind of Frisbee. We licensed it to Whammo, and it's the exact same shape, and it flies better, and it's easier to pick up, and it's all these things, not even a wheel. So it's just morphed as the need found itself, and that's what I've always said. It will find its home. The home will make itself evident to us. So we've just had an incredible team and everything that's been thrown at us, we've been able to prototype and quickly say, good, bad, pass, fail, and move on. And our successes have been many and they just keep on going. So um, I know I was going to say I was going to be quiet, Sal, but that doesn't work. <laughs> Well, Zach said he was going to talk, and that's not happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're doing fine, Dave. How are you? <laughs> I don't let him. Uh, I just have to ask. So if I'm a customer and I have a particular problem, so I seek and I want to move my, my, uh, my carts better, I would call Zach and say, hey, I have this problem. I'm having wear and tear. They're... They're wearing out faster. I'm doing A, B, C, D, and E. Then you guys would sit down and specifically work with my company to create a more efficient process. Exactly. We'll create the prototypes, give them to you to test. If you test them and find they have an advantage, we'll move on to production. So you actually produce it and then ship it to me and I would not uh, whatever, install it or whatever. With major companies and in industries, like David said, where we have a, a real advantage. Um, there's some industries like toys or other things where we can be successful just by looking different, but we know the longevity of the company lies in having real performance advantages. Um, so we work with many industry leaders and we, uh, we do a prototyping contract and then that moves into a, uh, a development deal where usually ends in a licensing deal. Um, we look at ourselves uh, as really a licensing entity. Right. Um, we try, we manufacture some of the things like the skateboard wheel. This, we source the manufacturer, we control the tooling, we take care of everything. This is Harley Davidson's new luggage. This oh, yeah. has wheels on it. So these wheels are now on the Harley luggage and they're used you know, exclusively on those bags through another company. We don't produce them. We produced all the prototypes. We went through all the testing, but then once it was proven, they make it and pay us a licensing fee. And we have a deal with Samsonite golf luggage. So actually it's behind us. We're on Samsonite golf luggage too. Um, so yeah, we try to do deal with deals with major companies and get our name out there in as many different places as we can. Now, if it was your choice, and I understand part of the choice may be whether it's a big company or, or a small company in the market and so on, but in general, would your choice be to license the technology, just get your royalties, let somebody else run with it, as opposed to being responsible for soups to nuts? The reason we make the skateboard wheels is we want to control the quality. We don't want somebody else making them and hurting our good name. So we handle that ourselves because it's a quality control issue. When, and this is on skateboards where people are riding them very, very fast and downhill, whatever. It's like it needs to be world class. When it comes to the luggage, they already nailed it. They did a great job making the wheel. They do a great job doing it. And so we just sign off on it. And it took me a while to sign off on those luggage wheels, almost two years. So once they can produce it to a level that we feel happy with, we let them run with it. So ideally, we would license everything because we just want to be an idea factory. We just want to sit there and pump out prototyping and rapid development. It doesn't always work that way because we have to maintain the brand control. And certain times it works and certain times it doesn't. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. And, and I understand you have a, 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 a lot of markets that are untapped or barely tapped because again wheels are absolutely everywhere but when i look out like a long long time into the future you know a long time for me is maybe 50 years okay 
how do you see your company progressing? I mean, beyond wheels, is it is is could it be like a like just like an R and D company, engineering company, solving problems, um, or, or 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 again, you know, fifty years from now, how do you see this thing? Okay, so as Zach mentioned in the beginning, I did make a massive scientific discovery that the world does not know yet. They will eventually hear what I did. Um, I'm not going to say when, because I'm not sure, but the future of the company lies in the big monster discovery that we have. Yes, we will always be an R&D shop. That is what we do well. This team, rapid prototypes, creates, innovates, all that kind of stuff. I think we do that. Um, so 50 years from now, we're going to be known as the... Uh, God, I don't even know what to say. We're going to be known for the discovery we made that this shape came out of. This shape came out of a much larger discovery, and it's just a tiny, tiny piece of it. And I would say that, um, you know, people people in the past didn't realize they even had a choice in their wheels. Uh, really, it was just a branding exercise for the most part on which wheels to buy. Um, and now for the first time ever, they have a real choice on which wheels. Uh, so I see 50 years in the future, people walking into a store, whether it's to buy a skateboard or whether it's to buy luggage or whether it's, you know, to buy really anything with the wheel for the first time ever, they're going to have a choice and people will know shark wheel, but you know, as a household name. And, um, you know, I see it as like, uh, there's always room for two. So, you know, where there's a Coca-Cola, there's always room for a Pepsi. And I see the shark wheel is being able to play alongside the circular wheel. Is there a Nobel Prize coming out of this? Hopefully. Okay. That's a, I want to be really careful because I don't want to be too prideful or anything like that. But what we have is massive and it covers all, all the categories except for peace. <laughs> um, I hope to win the Nobel Prizes in chemistry, physics, and uh, the other one, whatever it is. Um, we have something that absolutely qualifies for that. It's a big deal what we have. And when I say it's a big deal, it's a big deal. Um, he knows what it is. I know what it is. There's probably 100 other people that know what it is. Um, we've kept it close to our vest because it's the mother load. It's the whole thing. And when we launch it, we won't be able to take it back. And Mr. Nobel created those prizes because he's the guy that did dynamite. Yes. And he didn't like the fact that it was used the way that it was. And so he created his prizes for that reason. I have similar concerns. What we have is massive and we don't want it to be abused. And we want to make sure that it's done properly as best I can. And so that's where the, the challenge is right now. The only thing that's held us back is are we doing the right thing showing it to everyone? Is this meant to be known um, in a public give it to everyone thing? I'm the guy that just wants to give it away for free to everyone. I am not interested in licensing it. I am not interested in trying to wrap it up for myself. Products that I make out of it, you bet. Those are my patents and I'm going to license it. But the discovery itself is kind of like E equals MC squared. Yeah. You can't make money off of that. You can make money off of things that use that, but what I have is a giant overall thing that applies to every single physical science. So I'm going to solve a lot of the challenges that people have out there, and it's in my mind, it's going to create massive change. What just happened? <laughs> we lost a light somewhere. Hold on. Okay. Well, this oh, is. Oh, oh, there you go. The light's back on. Yeah, that's fine. We'll use this. You probably have a motion sensor. You weren't moving enough. Um, <laughs> I can't keep a right. so, so I'm going to ask you kind of two questions combined, and, and you can answer them separate or, or combined. Um, so one is, I know that, again, when we're talking about even the Nobel Prize or, or the type of work, the type of research, the type of product that you're doing, Typically, it's associated with people that have like, you know, PhDs and all these academic degrees and formal engineering backgrounds and so on and so forth. And 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 I know that's not the case. And I know Zach in particular has a very interesting background as, as a professional tennis player. 
So my question there is, would you encourage people to get that formal education because it helps? Or would you say, hey, listen, look at us. Don't even worry about it. Just jump in and, and start tinkering around. And then two kind of correlated to that. Um, I know there's been a lot of effort, personal sacrifices over a multi-year period. So just in general, would you, again, to, to maybe young people listening out there say, hey, listen, uh, yes, you're going to have to make these personal sacrifices, whatever, but but jump in and do it or or no, follow a, a more traditional career because the, the, the sacrifices are just too much. I did not follow a traditional career. Um, my father is a brilliant, brilliant man and went to school as an aeronautical engineer and he worked for McDonnell Douglas and Boeing his whole life. And he wanted very much for me to do that as well. Um, it did not fit into my personality. I was not, I did not like school. Um, that doesn't mean I'm stupid. <laughs> I did it all, but it, I knew it wasn't for me from day one. And I think some people like that sort of environment and like working for another person. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I could not do it any other way than I'm doing it right now. I consider that I've had a charmed life. Um, I, I wouldn't change any minute of it. It's so exciting. It's so much fun. I love discovering. I love tinkering. I love everything about my job, but I also love my partners. Um, it takes a team. So as an individual, you can't make it happen by yourself. I never would have gotten all this done without Zach. And without Pedro, it never would have happened. So I would say if anybody is out there and feels like, you know, the risk isn't worth the reward, it absolutely is. There is no downside to what I've done. I've been rich and I've been poor. I've been very happy at both times because I was doing what I love. And that's what I preach to everybody. Find out what you love. And that's an old saying. It's not new, but I am living proof of that. I am doing what I love. I'm changing the world of wheels right now, and I have a whole lot more to do, hopefully, before I check out. So do the traditional route if that's something you fit in. If you're a square peg in a square hole, do that. I was a fish out of water every single school class I was ever in. I was staring at the walls and staring out the windows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I read you. I read you. Zach, what about you? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'd say similar in that regard. I mean, I've always kind of been a dreamer and, and felt like my personality was that there is no limit. And when I was 12 years old, I made a, a life decision that I was going to be a professional tennis player at 12. I decided to drop every sport, every activity, hanging out with my friends, missing big events. And I just decided all day, every day, I'm going to train to be a pro tennis player at 12. And that's what I did. And, um, and I just really had, you know, horse blinders on where I didn't see any other alternative to that. It was, I had to make that happen at all costs. Um, and, it, and, you know, I was 27 years old, got to my career high ranking and ended up flying off of a mountain bike and suffering career ending injuries and four shoulder surgeries later. Um, I had a lot of decisions to make. Um, and when I met David, actually, when I met David, it had nothing to do with the wheel or the turbine. I didn't even know he had either one of them. It was about his scientific discovery. So I've been a science nerd, a physics freak, cosmology freak my whole life, as far as I can remember back. Uh, that's my number one passion. So that's where everything started for me. And when I met David and there was a business opportunity um, you know, that existed where it was like, hey, it's at the idea stage, but the sky's the limit here. Uh, to me, that was that dream moment again, where it's like, wait, you know, this could be like, from my perspective, like my new sport. And I could try to make this from my perspective, something that could, you know, that I could, again, put my blinders back on and try to succeed as much as, as possible in this new endeavor. And it was just so exciting and so cool. And um, I had the luxury at the point to be able to take a risk in doing that. And uh, I was happy to take that risk. So that, again, fit into my personality. And um, it was just something that's so fun. So I think everybody's different. And everybody, you know, you can't, you know, people don't fit into the same mold. And people need to find their own path. And I want to extrapolate just a little bit. When you ask, should I tell people, you know, go to college, do this, do that. 
my father was an aeronautical engineer and he went to a lot of schooling to become who he was and he needed to. With my discovery, the end result, the absolute end game of it is everybody's going to understand what is now complex things in a very simple way. So whether you're talking about physics, cosmology, chemistry, biology, it doesn't matter. There was a simpler explanation out there that apparently I'm one out of six billion that saw it. And once I saw it, I realized, oh my God, are we learning wrong? We're learning in this very complex, very difficult way, something that was, the hidden answer was so simple. It was ridiculously simple. And I hope to simplify the sciences for everyone so that schooling is not as taxing as it is right now. If you want to know about physics, you go to a physics guy. You cannot go to a biologist and talk about the atom, okay? If you want to talk about DNA, you go to that guy. You don't go to a physicist or a cosmologist. Everybody has separate sciences. I intend to unify everything into one model where it doesn't matter how smart or stupid you are, because I definitely am a simple man. I like simple explanations and simple things. And my discovery does not fall into theory where you have to conjecture and do this. I show people pictures and I link the pictures together into the story and everybody goes, oh my God, I see it. Everyone, everyone, I, of every person I've ever given the demo to, I always started it out with the same thing. I'm gonna show you the secrets of the universe and I'm gonna explain things in a simple way. And if I do that for you, you have to sign a dollar and give it to me. So I've done 110 demos, I have $110. And nobody has dared to say I'm wrong or I'm misgiving because what I have is self-evident. You do not get to argue with it. It is correct because you knew it was correct your whole life, you saw it all. I just put the two pieces together in a way nobody else ever did, and that's what made me unique. But again, I'm the king of simple. So what you found is one unifying principle. Yeah, one unifying model. One yeah. model that matches the whole darn thing, the whole kit and caboodle from the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest thing to the largest structures in the universe. It's the same thing over and over and over again. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Others have seen similar things. People have theories about Fibonacci and the golden ratio and this and that. That's all great. But they have little pieces of the puzzle. Lots of people have little pieces of the puzzle. Lots of people have seen similarities in other things. What I was able to ex do was explain why it looks like that, why it's happening that way. Everybody else saw similarities, but they couldn't explain where the similarity came from. I was able, because I was not a specialist in any one thing, I was able to put it all together as one big model. And I always explain it like a jigsaw puzzle. If we had a jigsaw puzzle and all the pieces were put together, you can tell me what it is easily. But if we take all the pieces apart and every person gets one piece and they get to study their one piece intently, they will never figure out what the whole puzzle looks like. And that's what science is right now. You've got physics, you've got chemistry, you've got biology. They're all studying their little window into the world, their little set of rules. I just show the whole darn thing in one shot. And it's like, try and argue with me. Try and say I'm not right. It's impossible. It's yeah. self-evident. It's beautifully, beautifully simple. Now, how, I, I, generally speaking, how long till, till you're ready to release this information? So I was ready a couple of months ago and I was going gangbusters with it. And then I lost my brother. Oh, okay. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. I lost my business partner um, a few months ago. I understand. It was, it was life changing for me. So I had to take a step back and now I'm as motivated as ever and really, really eager to get it out there because I want to change the world. But I, I had to step back for a little bit. So the answer is I'm not quite sure, but hopefully really soon. Okay. I well, that actually segues a little bit into something I also wanted to, to ask you. 
Um, and so Shark Wheel is is obviously very successful right now. It's it's beyond you know the the skepticism or, or the whatever. But when you first started, and and this is for for both of you because there may have been different experiences. But when you first started, where was your family supportive, your friends supportive, spouses, whatever, significant others, were they supportive or, 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 or not? And so how was that? A thousand percent. Everybody knew I wasn't crazy. <laughs> so I've been successful in other ventures. I had a very, very successful software company where I sold to the mortgage banking industry. Um, I had been in mortgage banking before that, and I had been very, very successful at that. So I've been a successful business person my whole life. And when I went off on this tangent, people knew that was the kind of person I was. I could jump from one thing to the other. Um, everybody, it's been a love fest because it's just such a beautiful thing. It's a very natural shape. It's very people don't have to really wonder if it's going to work. If you show them a Lexus V8 engine and you say it gets better power or performance, you got to prove it. Most people, when they looked at this, they were able in their own head to get the concept and say, oh yeah, that's going to be a good idea. Um, so no, we had no resistance whatsoever. I've never had anybody call me crazy or say you're being a fool. Um, it's been a, a wonderful ride the whole time. I told you I've lived a charmed life. It's been just a great, great, great journey. The last 15 years especially have been amazingly wonderful. And for me, it was, um, you know, Shark Wheel has over 1,100 investors. We've done equity crowdfunding um, and got a lot of investors in the company. Um, I'm not sure how many, but a decent chunk are my friends and family. So in terms of them supporting, they come through in spades. It's been amazing. My father was the original investor in the company. Um, my sister and brother-in-law are in. Um, countless friends and, and close family members are in as well. Um, so everyone's kind of jumped on board to to enjoy the ride. So one thing is to be supportive. Another thing is to put your money where your mouth is. Your mouth, your mouth is so. Yeah. Shark Wheel was created as a way of monetizing the discovery. I wanted the discovery to be mine and mine to give away, but I still had to monetize. I still had to live every day. I, I've got six children that I have to take care of and a wonderful wife. Um, Shark Wheel was monetizing the discovery and that's why it was created. And it served that purpose and allowed me to do both things at once. But now I have the option of giving the other thing away, which is my goal. It is my goal to give the other thing away for free and change the world. You're going to create a foundation? <laughs> I don't, that's where we don't know what to do quite yet. There's several different avenues I could do. Number one, I could go to the government and I could try and go through that route. That's probably not the answer because there is no secrets of the universe division of the government. They don't do this kind of stuff. I could go to private industry. I could go to an Elon Musk or a Richard Branson or somebody like that. I could share this with them and they would jump on it in two seconds. And then I could release it through their thing. Or I could just create a website. I could put it all out there and I could give it away for free. And the second I push go on the website, mark my words, within a week, I'll be on CNN or whatever the heck it is. People will see it and they will freak out. I don't know whether I'm just going to launch it to the public or whether I'm going to try and meet it out in pieces. I don't know which way I'm going to do it yet. That's the big challenge is how do I get it out there in a way that I control it and I just don't want people to do bad things with it. That's the key thing. I don't want them to do bad things with it. When you know how to do things, you can come up with bad things too. Oh, that yeah. I don't want to have happen. Yeah. That, that happened a lot with, with the nuclear scientists. You know, they, 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 they said, hey, this is a great source of energy. They were probably thinking about nuclear reactors and things and that. And, and then we turned it into a bomb, right? <laughs> Right. You drop a couple on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and you look at the devastation and every single one of those people involved in the Manhattan Project had the same feelings as Mr. Nobel. Oh no, what have I done? I do not want to be that guy. 
I do not want to look back on this and say, my children who are from ages 10 to 31 are going to suffer because of what I did. That's my biggest concern. And that's the only reason it hasn't launched. I got to make sure I do it the best way possible. It does have to come out. It's got to come out because it's the truth. And everybody I've ever spoken to said, if you have it, you must release it. And I do believe that. I don't want to die and put all this stuff in my coffin with me and take it with me. I want, I want the world to know what I did. I suggest you go the education way. We tried a little bit of that, and unfortunately, I, I think I, I don't know. It's just my I, I, my expertise is taking people like and just throwing ideas up. It's just fascinating to talk to you. I uh, one of our clients, uh, my family, uh, worked on the laser technology for the eyes, and I saw that develop and, and some other things. Um, it's fascinating, and I I, uh, I can understand your concern and. Um, I'm also a history buff. That's another technology that, that we're turning into weapons now. We're, we're putting lasers on, on ships and, and airplanes and, oh, yeah. uh, and and again, using them as, as, as a weapon. So, I mean, as, as, as good as it is for some things, and it's 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 every almost every technology can, can be used both ways. You know, what I have is a scientific discovery, but the Nobel I'd like to win most is peace. Amen. Excellent. I'd like to have the reason to stop fighting. If you have the answer and everybody sees it, you ain't going to argue. And by the way, I'm going to throw this out there and it might turn people off, but the discovery shows that there is a God. Something is happening. There is a method to the madness. And when you show it to people and they see it, it's, it's mind boggling how beautiful the universe is. <laughs> Something's yeah. happening and everybody will come to their own conclusion on it. I am not going to push religion on anybody, but this will validate that there was a creator. There is something happening. Mm -hmm. Well, well I, I hate to tell you, uh, we're, we're pushing almost an hour here, by the way. I and, and, and I know we were thinking of doing that. The Remember we said how much time we have. <laughs> we and I was going to keep but well, we can do a series of these. <laughs> that's, I, that's fine with me. That works. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to get back to you. Uh, uh, if you'd like to see a demo, come to our shop in California and I'll show it to you. Hey, that uh, sounds like an invitation to me. You yeah. will. You're going to lose a dollar, so you got to be prepared for that. Uh, I'll bring two. Well, one for me. One for me. Uh, well, this is the Empress of Biz. Uh, another <laughs> Sal knows the most fascinating people in the world, and they they are definitely people like uh, Zach and and um, David. Um, and which proves my premise that it's small business and innovators and entrepreneurs like like him that make a difference. And uh, we're going to have to keep up with you. Well, I'm, an, I'm an open book. I have nothing to hide. I want to show it. I love talking about it and I'm willing to go there. And I'd love to share it with you guys so that you know we ain't blowing smoke. We got we got the monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, everybody, let's give uh, <laughs> Sal, how about giving you a, your, a plug about what you do, et cetera, so people know how to contact you. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Um, so my name is Sal Cost. I'm a business broker. I help people buy and sell businesses, uh, typically uh, Main Street type businesses, so bars, restaurants, small factories, small car dealerships, things like that. Um, if you would like to contact me, you can call me on my cell phone. It's area code 484-358-9470. Again, 484-358-9470 goes right to me. Uh, my email, same thing. It's sal, S-A-L, 459 at yahoo.com. Again, sal, 459 at yahoo.com. Goes straight to me. If you would like to buy or sell a business or even just explore it or talk about it, please let me know. Gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> sharkwheel.com that's all yeah sharkwheel.com we're an OEA. it's easy to get a hold of us <laughs> okay. uh this is joanne forrester the empress of biz you want to get a hold of me i love talking to people uh 
and I go on the landline, old-fashioned landline, 412-440-6969. We're on Facebook, Empress of Biz, Listen, Learn, Prosper. We also have a number of podcasts and our new venture with Sal, which is turning out to be an amazing adventure as we are doing the audio. And I am not the technical person. Thank God for Sal. <laughs> so... But uh, Empress of Biz, Listen, Learn, Prosper, and what I do, um, financing. But um, probably what I'm best at is helping people take a look at their dream and how to make it come true, think it through. Gentlemen, I'm fascinated. I, I want to see that Nobel Prize on all disciplines. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Especially the peace one. Yeah. Yeah, have a great evening, and thank you for your time. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you very much, Zach and David, for, for hanging out with us and uh, talking to us for almost an hour. It goes by quickly, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Look forward to our next meeting, guys. You got it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Peace.